Hey guys, it's Mandy, aka Mandylicious. I wanted to show you guys the tree that I actually put up for the first time in my life. Not too bad, not too bad, not too shabby. Here is my little uh, computer and the little stereo system that I got for free. I actually got the tree for free also. Um, I've had a lot of great things happening um, in my life just by being, you know, vulnerable and, and, and listening and healing and um, everything great's going on. Like everything I need is just being, it's just like, it's coming from the sky. Like it's so weird. It's awesome. Um, also like I just noticed when we, when we take our time to ground ourselves and be able to listen to what, you know, the universe or Jesus has to say to us, um, that's a huge part of our lives. Like we have to make time out for Jesus or the universe. We have to make time to be able to listen. We have to make time to be able to, you know, heal ourselves from all kinds of things that we have in our lives. And it, and it's, a, it's just, it's just phenomenal how things just come and play. And you know, when you're in alignment with your, you know, heart, body, your heart, mind, and soul, that, things just fall into place and you have to just trust. Trust is a big thing and have faith. Like if I didn't have the faith or the trust right now, nothing would be falling into place how it's supposed to be. And I'm, I'm so grateful and thankful for the universe and, and Jesus that it's, it's humbling. Like it, it, I, like I said before, I've never cried as much as I cry now. Like, and that's the thing too, is like the universe or God, they have to like shake us. They, they got to shake us to be all we can be. If we want to shake the earth and be a big part of the earth and, and be out here helping, we have to be disciplined. Like when I say disciplined, we have to, we have to be able to heal, uh, heal all like the insecurities. We have to be able to heal we have to feel, we have to be able to heal a lot of, you know, traumas, hurt, pain to, to be able to be who he wants us to be. Like I said, we have to, basically we have to grow up. We have to face things in life that are not easy. Um, a lot of them are just tests that we go through to see if we'll pass and not to see if we'll pass, but you know, God already knows the tests or Jesus knows the test that we're going to go through and, and we're going to pass or not, you know? And if we don't pass, we just, honestly, we keep, having that same cycle I did for 40 years, 43 years, the same cycle over and over. Like, when is it going to get better? Or when is this going to stop happening? When is my luck going to get better? And a lot of actually, I think our luck has to do with the way we think. And um, we have to have a positive mind, which is so much easier said than got done, guys. I know, like, uh, when, when you have a bad day or if we have mental illnesses and like three negative things come at me at once, I, I automatically, I'll, I'll turn bipolar. I'll start getting anxiety. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy at all. Like somebody could knock at your door and, and it's just, you know, God forbid somebody you don't want to see, like, I mean, you don't have to answer the door, but you can get a phone call with some bad news or just things that aren't going our ways. And, and it's tough. It's very, very, very tough. But I feel like living in this in this world, sometimes I feel it's hell on earth, even though I know, you know, Jesus lived here and, and went through a lot of similar things and experiences that we have. Like he could sit in a room with, you know, nothing but all druggies and not do drugs. He'll sit there and try to help them like that. That's exactly who I would love to be. You know, like no, no temptations and, and just full of joy and full of, you know, nothing but humble and and to be just all I can be. And I know it's a huge journey because when we start humbling in ourselves and we start healing those insecurities and all them doubts and them fears and everything that we have, when those start healing and we start thinking more positive, like I can do this, like, you know how many times that I have been out here and been in situations where I'm like, and, it, and sometimes it was life or death because I travel a lot. So I'll be on the highway and uh, in between two semis or something really tired. And I have to snap out of it and be like, I can do this. I can do this. And I got this. Mandy's got this. Mandy, come on. You got this. We've got to have faith and believe in ourselves. And um, just for everything in life. Like, but see, it's it, like I said, it's so much easier said than done because we go through so much stuff like it's, it's, it's unbelievable how much stuff we go through, let alone we have to see with our own eyes or we, what we have to feel. And I'm just grateful and thankful for everything. Like even the things that seem impossible, God will make, you know, Jesus or the universe will make possible in a heartbeat, but he has to know he could trust us. He, I, I don't mean to say he, I'm sorry. 
the universe or Jesus needs to know that they can trust us. You know, like if we're put in a situation or a, or a trial or anything to go handle something for, you know, Jesus and, and he doesn't trust us with it. Like, how are we going to be able to grow? How are we going to be able to prevail? How are we going to be able to believe and trust in ourselves? So these, these, uh, healing experiences is not just like just one thing. It's, it's about a lot, almost every aspect in our lives. Like, um, I didn't realize how much healing I needed until I actually got on this journey. And it's just, it's, um, it's, it's amazing. Like how much stuff that we bottle up in our hearts and our minds, or we suppress. I know I've suppressed a lot of things. That's why I'm, I've turned into this big cry baby because <laughs> I have so much to, to let out. And, um, I don't even realize or know it until something comes up. Just like that tree, like putting that tree up, I had to purge out of my heart and soul, like just cry and be by myself. I have to be by myself on this healing process. There's no other answer to that because I can't, when somebody else is around me with my ADHD, I can't focus. I can't, I can't do just one thing at one time. I have to be able to give my whole heart, mind and soul into whatever I'm doing. And just the purging and crying over putting up this tree, like, you know, uh, when I was little, my mom and them, they used to put up the Christmas tree. We would open it on Christmas, make all the family videos. But I have not had that. I have not had that family thing since until since I was little, you know. And uh, my sons, they we we um, had gifts and stuff when they were younger. But the kid's father, he didn't even believe in you know a lot of holidays or you know, buying presents or doing this and that, which I understand because everybody is very different. Everybody is raised differently. And especially people that were born in, you know, other different countries or islands, they're very, very different in a lot of ways. But in all reality, we all come back, we all come together with our, with our love and with the compromising of things. And it's, it's, it all, it all works out, but we just have to believe, we have to trust, we have to, I just do it. Like I pushed myself for three days to put this little tree up. I mean, the ribbons around it, some of them, are, you know, but you know what? I did a great job. <laughs> I couldn't, couldn't down myself because I had, I did the strength and power and discipline myself to be able to do that. And as easy it is to some people to just put up a Christmas tree, I, I'm grateful and thankful it is that easy for you guys, because it's, it's not easy for some of us out here that have been through, you know, basically hell and back most of our lives. And, um, and I'm not trying to be a victim or I'm just trying to help us that have been through this. Cause like one thing about do this healing journey too, is like exposing ourselves. And I'm a very private person. When I say very private, like I knew somebody for almost what six to eight months. And I didn't, they didn't even know where I worked. Like <laughs> I just very private. Like it's more of high and by. And if people come a conversation, I used to always be the one to more, more or less listen, unless I knew you or was comfortable with you, which was very rare people. Like even to this day, I think even my sons, they don't even know, you know, certain things that has happened because I believe they didn't, they shouldn't even know. But one day, you know, whatever God has me do or, or, or Jesus has me say or the universe, I will definitely tell him. But like I have uh, been through a lot of crap and uh, God and Jesus and the universe knows exactly um, what we can handle. You know, a lot of us, when we go through trials and tribulations, we straight, we turn straight to drugs, drinking, al- you know, the alcohol, the weed, the heavier drugs. And what we do is we suppress the pain for the moment. Like we, it takes away that moment of, of pain and, and actually facing it and dealing with it. In all reality, it's great for that moment. But when you run out, what happens? Like, you know, some people will just sleep it off until they can get the next high or, or the next drink. And um, I'm not even judging people that have to do that because life is not easy. Like we all go through shit. I've done it my life. I've done a lot of different things in my life. I've experienced a lot of different things. And that was by choice. But I wouldn't be here today and I wouldn't be able to talk about certain things if I didn't experience or go through it to be able to help others. And that, and when we suppress these feelings and when we <clears throat> take it away for the moment, just like now, like the past few months, I've had to face everything headstrong and um, head on. And um, I got even face more head on. And uh, it goes, our hearts and souls go way deeper than we think and go way back to when we were our inner child, our little, you know, a little child. And, 
All I could say is that no matter what, it's, you know, day by day, one step at a time. And definitely, you know, pray to the universe or, or Jesus, whatever you guys believe in. And there's so many other religions out here. Whatever you guys believe in, in that higher power, just ask them, you know, give me the strength, Lord. Give me the give me the courage. Give me, you know, take away these insecurities, fears, doubt. Like, even before I come and do these videos, you know how much little anxiety I have or like, I kind of doubt my, you know, it's, it's just, it's just, a, it's, everything is like a mind boggling, um, situation and, it, and it's how we shift or think like I can, I can easily turn it. I don't want to say easily, but now it's becoming more easily, but like I could turn some negative things into positive. Like just say, for instance, you get a negative text message, you start getting mad. And you know what I do now, instead of entertaining that negativeness, I either don't answer to where that person has to think about what they said, or I'm just, I'm not in the mood to feeding, I always call it feeding their sickness. Like I'm not in the mood to sit there and argue and keep going back and forth because I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to help others do better. And, but I have to first do help myself. And so I, I just don't entertain it. And um, before I will, <laughs> I will go on and on, like have the last word and everything. Now it's just more of like, okay, I'm not going to let this get to me. Um, maybe they'll change up. Maybe the attitudes will change or because anybody could be having a bad day before they text me. Anybody could be going through something when they text me. I, before when I would text negative stuff would have been either, you know, it would trigger an insecurity. It would trigger uh, something in, in my heart and soul, you know, abandonment, anything it would trigger. And so I'm ready to go back at it and and I'm going to hurt them two times more than they hurt me. And that is definitely not the way to go because some words and stuff that we say, and me as, me as it going, me, me as one of the biggest people that have done it. Like I have said some hurtful things that come out of my mouth, just going from zero to a hundred real quick that will affect people for the, the rest of their lives that I would have never even thought that or even cared enough to even like, Oh, well, fuck it. They hurt me. I'm going to hurt them back 20 times worse, 10 times worse, two times worse. And two wrongs definitely don't make a right. And not only that, our words can scar somebody until they end up healing or until the, until the day they're down under the ground. Like it's being a human is, is very, very challenging as far as the world today and what we go through and how we, how we deal with it, how we heal it, because everybody heals differently. Everybody handles every situation differently and we can't predict anything like we can uh, manifest and, and, you know, tell the, tell the universe what we want in the future. We can manifest like, um, I manifested something and, um, it's starting to come around now and it's like, Oh my gosh, I'm getting scared. Like, I can't be like that. I have to go full force and believe. And, um, I think it's kind of more of like the little girl that I used to be when I was really shy. <laughs> I was really shy and I, um, your heart beats fast or you get anxiety or you start shaking. Like, I, I don't want to be like that because you know what? I'm becoming stronger. I'm coming, becoming more wiser. I'm not perfect. I'm far from perfect. And nobody in this world is perfect. Sometimes we just have higher um, standards or, or values or discipline and, and everything. And it's just like, or a lot of us, like me in the past, I've been through some stuff with certain people that did certain things or certain ways. Like uh, somebody asked me one day, would you date somebody that's riding a bicycle? is riding a bicycle, you know, it could be riding, going to work or anything. And most of them said no, but you know what I said? I said, yes, because number one, either the car could have been broke down. You know, number two is that, um, maybe they're driving their bicycle to work. You know, maybe they're waiting to get that nice car. Maybe they have 10,000 saved and nobody would ever know because the problem is these days is, is a lot of assumptions, assuming people that just assume and, um, just what, what, what their eyes see, they, they can turn that, what they see into six different scenarios. And that's just plain out mean and rude and, and judgmental. Like you never judge because one day that could be you riding that bicycle. And what are you going to think? Oh, everybody's judging me while I'm riding the bicycle or no, it's just, everybody just needs to be themselves, mind their own business. If somebody wants to tell you something or, or you, you know, you hear something, don't gossip about it because you don't even know if it's true unless it came from that person's mouth. And then on top of that, whatever somebody confides you with in with you and they trust you, they're going to know who opened their mouth. Like it's if they, if they told two people one thing and they told two people over here a different thing, 
But that, but the first thing I told the first two people, one of them two told, and then not only that, they switch it up. It gets all, but anyways, that's all petty, but that pettiness can lead to just a massive heartache, like heartache as far as somebody lying on somebody or people believe in stuff. And we shouldn't sit out here and, and, and worry about what other people think of us, but honestly, we're human. We are human. Like you can get one look from somebody and it'd be the snobbiest look, which really you would think they're judging you or they could have just been having a bad day and that could be their resting beat face. Like we just don't know anything. So that's why it's always great to just come out here with the, you know, in, I'm going to say innocent heart. And what I mean by that is no intentions, you know, just, just high and by, or, Hey, you have a great smile or, Hey, you know, your hair looks nice today. Just simple things, guys. If we could just show love and gratitude to everybody that we see every day, that one, that one sentence could mean the, the whole world to them for that day, or it could mean the whole world for them for a whole week, because you know what? They never get any positivity spoken to them. So if we could just be out here and say, you know, even it's even more of a blessing when somebody's able just to give you stuff like the stuff that I've been giving, I, I, I'm going to say manifested, but I was like, you know, and I, and you know what? I still haven't turned that radio on for a video, but two days before I got this, you know, this radio from my great friend, Becky, or somebody who's always got my back, somebody who, you know, helps me, um, get through things or she shows me what I'm lacking or slacking. I mean, one big thing is my phone. Like I got to stay off my phone and, and it's just, um, uh, cause being somebody when you're on the phone and you're actually spending some actual, you know, good time with people or, you know, some quality time, the last thing they want to see is somebody on their phone and, and, <clears throat> I have a bad habit of just no excuses, but I just always have to be doing something. Like right now I'm sitting here clicking this pen. Like I got to fight that. I, I don't know. I don't know. Like I, I don't take any pills to even with the full hysterectomy. I had like 12 years ago. I um, had a full hysterectomy. I had cancer <clears throat> after the full hysterectomy. It was robotic surgery. So it was, it was literally this huge robot. Cause I was supposed to be a, totally asleep before they took me in the operation room. But this, as they're wheeling me in, into that room I see a huge robot in the corner of the room and I'm like what the hell and then boom I fell asleep I was knocked out but when I woke up from the surgery for some reason I remembered that robot so I asked the doctor I said man how did that robot have surgery on me is that what the robotic surgery is is like him having surgery on me he said well yes but I control the robot's arms from you know on the other other end of the actual room he's got he's up there and, and this, he can see through the window or he can see through, uh, you know, everything in front of him. And he's controlling the robot's arms with what, you know, whatever he has up there in that room. So it's just amazing. The stuff's that, you know, technology too, like, but anyways, like, I just want you guys to know, no matter what, wake up every day. And even if you have to look in the mirror and say, you know what, my nose is big today, but I'm going to smile. <laughs> I know that sounds so corny and weird, but you and you and so many of us have so many insecurities or doubts or fears, anxieties, you know, bipolar depression, PTSD. I mean, and it goes on and on and on. And um, we're all still here, though, you guys. We're all still here. You're able to sit here and look at this video with eyes. You know, some people are blind. We just got to be thankful for the little things. The little things in my life is what really, really counts. And I'm definitely like, I seen the grandbaby yesterday. She's amazing. Like, <laughs> she ha she kind of reminds me of myself. She's very smart. She's, you know, a year and a half. And what she reminds me of, her, of myself is with that, you know, we all do a little bit crazy things or we're very strong minded or, you know, even when she likes to sit there and like, she just, you know, like she's going to jump, like she's flying over, you know, the whole, the whole bedroom and <laughs> like she's super woman or something. But it's just like, that shows me that no matter what, she's going to try. Like she, she doesn't give up for anything. She might like throw a little whining in here in the middle of her, you know, trying or she keeps going back at it, man. And, and she keeps having that spirit and that, and that kind of um, attitude and personality. She's going to definitely prevail one day if she makes all the right decisions, you know, and nobody's perfect, but I am blessed and I'm grateful for everyone that's in my life, you know? And, uh, even down today, I took the car apart to, um, I have a, I got the radiator fixed on my car and, and I've had the water pump for like what, almost two weeks. Maybe it came in the mail. I ordered it offline and 
we drove 45 minutes and then 25 minutes out the way. Well, I had to find a ride three times to go where I was going. And, and, you know, I'm not blaming the people that, that didn't answer the door or anything, but like, I'm just saying like, I know my patience and, and everything is changing for the better. And I'm going to be able to have more patience in life with people and, and look at things differently. And that's, you know, and that's what the universe and, and Jesus is waiting for is us to fully change so they can trust us out here with all these missions and stuff that we got to do and the great, and the great abundance that's going to come with it. And I'm not, not, I'm not talking with just money. I'm talking like all the love, the trust, man, who wouldn't want all that in their life, but everything takes work. It takes us believing in ourselves. And it's not easy. Like I say, we're all human. We make mistakes, but I just want to say, you know, thank you guys for just even tuning in or, you know, hearing what anybody has to say, because there's 50 trillion things out here in this world we could be doing or listening to or watching and just for giving me that support. And, um, everything's going to work out. I'm going to be great one day and all of us are going to be taken care of. There's no if, ands or buts or doubts. Like I'm not, I'm not doing this for the money. Like I always say, but you know, the money will get us all what we need. God will shed even more abundance to be able to help others that are even in more need. And I'm grateful and blessed for that. And, um, let's just be out here every day and with good intentions, you know, be kind, say nice words. Even if we're having a bad day, like I say, we could be going through something or waiting for an answer to something. And the person that we talk to, if we come at them negative, we're going to get a negative reaction. If not even a negative, we're going to get an anger reaction or a mad reaction. And that's not good. Like they can, anything can happen. But if you're always out here with a true, you know, genuine intentions and just being nice, you're going to get that back. I'm, I'm a full believer in that. And, um, just thank you guys. And you guys have a great night and, um, I love you guys and God bless.